In this video, we're going to create a dashboard microservice that simply listens to several topics and then uses some of the Java Collections framework utilities to decide what to show on the dashboard. So a quick overview of what we have. We have our plant diary microservice, which we've been working on for quite a while. And this imports data from a plant places microservice. Users can upload photos, and when they upload photos, it's going to go into a photo in Kafka topic. Now, notice that anything that writes to a topic is green, and anything that listens to, subscribes to, or reads from a topic is gold. So you see the photo in has one producer and two consumers. It's being listened to by the photo processor, which is going to grab an uploaded photo, watermark it, and resize it. And then if it's successfully finished, it will put that photo path on photo out. If something went wrong, it goes on to photo exception. That's one consumer of photo in. The other consumer of photo in is our dashboard because it wants to read from the photo in topic and compare that to the entries on the photo out topic. And that will tell us what has completed processing and what is still in progress. Also, our dashboard will listen to photo exception so that it can show any processes that happen to run into exceptions. Let's take a look at our photo processor application, and after that, we'll jump in and create our dashboard. You can see all of those topics I mentioned demonstrated here. First of all, the photo processor application is incredibly small. It's a Spring Boot application with just one class and one principal method that's delegating most of the work to an imported library called Thumbnailator. Nonetheless, you see that we are listening on the photo end topic, and then we go to our try-catch block. And remember how a try-catch block works. If something goes wrong here, it skips the remaining lines of the try block and comes down to the catch method. So the only way that line 41 will execute is if all of the lines before it executed without error. If there is an error before line 41, line 41 will not execute, and instead execution will come down to the catch block. So we know simply by looking at this that success means the path was added to photo out, Something wrong means the path was added to photo exception, and we're listening to photo in to get that path in the first place, so it's the same record in each place. With that being said, let's go ahead and start our dashboard. I'm simply going to start a new project, and we'll make it a Spring Initializer project. We'll call it com.myplantdiary dashboard. Everything else here looks good. Let's grab Apache Kafka and also Timeleaf as some dependencies. And finish. Since we're running yet another Tomcat instance, let's remember to change the port. So we simply come up to our edit configurations, and then for VM options, we pass in dash D, no space, server.port, and we'll give it a new port number. This one we can give 8082. If we take a look at our application so far, we see that we have our application class, the thing that's going to start things up. We can add a few more classes under this. We can start with our DAO package. The DAO is the DAO is typically where we do any persistence, and in this case, the topic is our persistence layer. So right-click on this new Java class, and we'll call this dashboard DAO. We will extract an interface out of this in just a bit, but for now, we just want to set a couple things up. First of all, let's listen to all three of the topics that we have. So notice now I've made three very similar methods. Public void, no big deal there. And then the word process, and then the name of the topic that it's listening to. Photo in, photo out, and exception. Each one of them accepts a string variable called path because that's what's on the topic. That's essentially a unique identifier or a token that we can find on the topic. Now you notice the Kafka listener annotation above each of these methods, and that automatically subscribes these methods to those topics. In other words, when something lands on the topic, it will get consumed here by these methods with the Kafka listener annotation. But you notice that there's a group ID dashboard which is different from what we've seen before. We've seen maybe plant diary or plant places before. And why is that? Well, remember that a topic can have multiple subscribers. And consider the case of our photo processor. This is a long running operation, so we might have multiple instances of the photo processor. 
If we have multiple instances, how do we ensure that one and only one instance will grab the atom from the topic and it won't be processed by multiple photoprocessors? Indeed, that's where the group ID comes in, because the group ID says, okay, I'm going to listen to this, and when I grab it, I'm going to claim it for this entire group ID so that nobody else associated with this group ID will want to grab that item. The next thing that we want to do when we hear from photo in, when we hear from photo out, and when we hear from photo exception, we want to add these paths to a series of sets. Let's go ahead and define some sets. Now that we've created each of those, we can add the path to each of the hash sets in the appropriate method. Now that I've added the photo in, photo out, and photo exception, we can go ahead and add getters and setters for them. Our DAO looks pretty good, so we can refactor and pop an interface out of this. The only ones we need are the getter and setter methods because we're going to access those from our service class. The process methods are internal to this class because they have that Kafka listener set up, and that's simply the introduction of the topic into this class. So we'll go ahead and refactor, and we'll call this one i-dashboard-dao. Now remember that we have to say a few things in application.properties about Kafka. So I'm going to one of my other projects that's one of our microservice projects, and I'm simply going to borrow some of that configuration so that I can put it in our application.properties in our new dashboard. So put it like so. The only difference I'm going to make is the group ID I'm going to change from my plant diary to dashboard. But nonetheless, this will give us all of the other credentials that we need to connect to our specific Kafka instance. Now that we've finished our DAO layer, let's do the fun part. Let's work on the service layer. This is going to be fun because we have some business logic that we can add this time. Simply make a new package, new Java class, dashboard service, and in here, let's speak in the terms of business because this is the business logic layer. So I'm going to make three methods that describe the possible states of any photo that's being processed. So here you see three methods, get processed photos, get unprocessed photos, and get exceptions. Very similar to what we saw in our DAO with photo in, photo out, and photo exception, but this is more in the terms of business versus in, out, and exception. To get these different items though, we are going to need to reach down into our dashboard. Let's do a couple things. First of all, dashboard DAO, let's annotate this with the repository annotation. Now let's go back to dashboard service and let's use auto wired to get access to this. Now that we have access to the DAO, filling out these methods is a bit more straightforward. Get exceptions will be the simplest of all because in that case we simply return dashboard DAO dot get photo exception. We know that the only way something can end up in that exception topic is if something went wrong. So that's the easiest. Now let's consider get processed photos. A processed photo means that the photo exists on the in topic and the out topic alike, so we need an intersection. So we'll start with a brand new collection that represents this intersection. Let's initialize it to our photo in collection. Now we want the intersection of photo in and photo out. Retain all will do that for us. It will start with one collection and then retain only what belongs in a second collection that we pass to it. And that's why on line 16 I had to actually create a new collection because I knew this collection was going to get modified on line 17. So I created a new collection and I took all of the photos from our in collection and initialized our new collection with those in photos and then simply did the intersection with the out photos. That represents everything processed because it's hit those two milestones, photo in and photo out. Now for unprocessed photos, we want to do something similar, but we actually want to get the difference. Let's say set. You notice here it starts very similar. We start with a brand new collection. This time we call it difference. And we populate it with the photo in collection from our dashboard DAO. But to get the difference, we need to start with that and remove what's in photo out. We know when a photo was successfully processed, it reaches the photo out collection. 
in this specific method, we're not interested in the ones that are processed. We're interested in the ones that are not processed. So we start with photo in, which is all of the photos that have been uploaded. We subtract from that photo out, which is all of the photos that have successfully been processed. And that gives us a difference, which is the photos that have not been processed because they've reached the in topic, but not the out topic. We look pretty good here. Let me go ahead and annotate this with the service annotation and also refactor and extract an interface. Select each of our methods and choose refactor. And now we're ready to move on to our controller. So I right click, I say new, Java class, dashboard controller, and we'll give it the controller annotation. The controller will be fairly straightforward because it simply has to return these collections back to an HTML page that can display them. Let's say public. We use the model and view return type because we know that that will allow us to return objects to our HTML page so that it can be used. And it looks like I missed a dependency here, so I'll go ahead and add it. Inside the method, we'll create the new model and view object, which we'll eventually return. Remember that the view name reflects the HTML page that we will return, so let's remember it's going to be called dashboard.html. We'll auto-wire the dashboard service in because we know that we can invoke several methods on the dashboard service that will give us these collections that we want to return back to our HTML page. Control-Alt-V assigned to a new variable. And now you see we have each of the collections that we have that represent our processed photos, unprocessed photos, and exceptions. So now we can add them to the model and view. And with that, our controller is finished, and we simply need to make the dashboard HTML page under resources. I'll start by copying an HTML source that I have in one of our other microservice projects, just to give us a start. We'll make a new folder, and under that we'll make our new page dashboard.html. And paste in a little bit of that stuff to start us off. What I really wanted to grab was a bit of the bootstrap logic and a bit of the time leaf logic. And then inside of the body, I can, I can just make our quick and dirty dashboard using some quick th elements. So we'll start, we'll say h1, and then we'll make a few h2 columns. Within this, we can use ul to make a repeating group. The important attribute is th each, because remember in time leaf we can use that to create a loop. So what you see here is we're iterating over the processed photos, and we got the processed photos from our controller via the model and view. Iterate means we're looping over them and we're going to shake hands with each one in this collection here. Each time we shake hands, it's going to go into the variable called processed. Now, because this is going to be repeated, the line I'm highlighting now is going to be repeated for each loop iteration. When I put process down here as a variable, it's going to print each item from that collection one line at a time use, using this li class. So this entire sequence is a loop, and we can reuse that same loop on both unprocessed and exceptions. Now our page looks pretty good. I'm doing one final check before I turn everything on, and I did notice that I needed Spring Boot Starter Web in my palm, so I went ahead and I added this entry. What I recommend, I have edited this file several times throughout this video. This will all be pushed up to GitHub, and I'll put a link to that in the comments. So if you want to replicate what I'm doing here, I recommend you just go ahead and grab my palm. That will probably be easier. One other thing I need to do is add a request mapping annotation in my controller so that we know that this method will be invoked when we hit the slash endpoint, or in other words, root. So we need to put some kind of mapping to go from endpoint to this actual method that's going to handle that endpoint. And with this, I think everything's okay. I'm going to go ahead and start up all three of our microservices, plant diary, photo processor, in dashboard so that we can see them interact with our topics in real time 
and live. This is what our dashboard looks like. One handy thing is, remember that I specified a different port for this microservice? So you notice that we can actually run our new dashboard microservice right alongside our normal specimen mi microservice and indeed our photo microservice. All three are up and running now, and I've set breakpoints on all three at different points so that we can watch what happened. I sent this trial through earlier, a photo that was properly processed, and we see indeed that it is processed. We'll start with a new image that I've added, Berkwood Viburnum, so we'll choose Berkwood, and then Submit. I'm anticipating a whole series of breakpoints to hit here, and they will be in different IntelliJ IDEA versions, so I will walk through and tell you which one's hitting. Right now, we are in the specimen microservice, essentially the same one that we were just looking at with that Submit button and the like. And notice what it's doing. It has received the photo and it's about to write it to the photo in topic on Kafka as a producer. Now this is going to get really interesting because when I hit F9, we might see two different breakpoint hit simultaneously. So I choose F9 and we see a breakpoint hit in photo processor and it's sitting on this Kafka listener for photo in. But just out of curiosity, let's go to our dashboard and take a look at our dashboard idea. The, a breakpoint is hitting there and a very similar method. Take a look at that annotation on line 16. You see this is also subscribed to that photo in topic, but with a different group ID. This one is dashboard where the photo processor is my plant diary. Just for fun, let's see what happens when we go ahead and push it through the dashboard. So we see it goes through the dashboard and let's refresh our dashboard page. And you see that this one is in unprocessed, and that makes sense, doesn't it? Because we've just received it, we pushed it through the dashboards listener method, but what we have not yet done is we have not yet allowed the photo processor to process it. So indeed, you see the breakpoint is right here on photo processor, and so it makes sense that this one is unprocessed because it's currently waiting on the photo processor. So let's go ahead and let it go through. I'll choose F8, 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 F8. We'll keep going through and the photo processor is going to do its job, watermark the photo, and then it's going to resize the photo. We know that everything went okay because we're on line 41. We did not go to the catch block. So it indicates that these three lines of logic in the try executed without error. And this is going to add something to our, our photo out topic. And remember what the photo out topic is. It's when our photo processor is finished processing, it puts it on photo out, and then that ends up getting consumed by our dashboard. So you see our dashboard is consuming from each of these topics. Our plant diary is producing to one. Photo processor is reading from that one and writing to two, potentially two. One for success, one for exception. But you'll also notice, like the breakpoint we saw earlier, the photo in is actually being observed by two different processes, and that's why when the photo was uploaded, we saw breakpoints hit in these two different microservices simultaneously. Now, let's just see where we are. I don't expect any change just yet. We should still have one unprocessed and one processed, and indeed that's the case. But now watch what, ha watch what happens when I tell the photo processor to finish processing. I'm going to choose F9 or continue. Well, now look who woke up. My dashboard, and it notices that this has come through the alt. So we'll go ahead and tell that to continue. Let's take a look at our dashboard. You see that the item went from unprocessed to process once we sent it through. Let's try one more experiment, but this time let's try something that we know is not going to work. I have a file here called javadoc. I have no idea what's in it, but it's not an image, so I'm anticipating an exception. Now, our specimen microservice has no idea. It just knows it's uploading some kind of binary file. It doesn't inspect the context, the contents rather. So we'll go ahead and send that through and we're going to see it register on our dashboard. Let's take a look at our dashboard. So we see javadoc.txt is currently sitting in unprocessed. Since thumbnail later won't be able to resize this or put a watermark on it, I anticipate it's going to throw an exception and we'll eventually see this go down to exceptions. Here's our photo processor. I choose F8, F8. 
first few lines will be fine. It's when we try to read it as an image and then we try to scale it. Boom, there we go. You notice that the scaling did not work. So if that's not going to work, it's going to skip the other lines until it comes to the catch block. And then it's going to have the catch block decide what to do. So the catch block sends off a stack trace. And then it also adds this to the uh, exception topic. Now what's interesting is let's go back to our dashboard and look at what breakpoint picked up over here. Well, I set a breakpoint for process photo exception and sure enough that one picked up. So we go ahead and let that play through and now let's go back and look at our dashboard and I bet when I refresh, we'll see it go from unprocessed to exceptions. Looks like it stayed in unprocessed as well. And come to think of it, that actually makes sense because for unprocessed, I'm just taking the in and I'm subtracting the out and seeing what the difference is. What I probably should do is take the in and subtract the out and the exceptions. That way we can make a difference between something where something went wrong and something where it either hasn't processed yet or it's stuck in a queue or it's taking a long time or something of that nature. But either way, I hope this live example helps to demonstrate how we can use topics and how we can use what's built in with sets and hash sets and a lot of the Java Collections framework to build a Spring Boot project from the ground up that acts as a dashboard that's just monitoring several Kafka topics. So I hope this video has been helpful and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.